We're here with Mississippi College head coach John Bland as we get set for this weekend's homecoming game against the University of West Georgia. First of all, coach, let's go back to the Valdosta game. It seemed mm -hmm. like the Blazers got a lot of breaks and they took advantage of those breaks. The tip pass, they defended the, the fake punt pass well, and that was just yeah. a tough night for the Choctaws. It was. You know, a lot of things went wrong. Let's, that, back to the fake punt, you know, one of the things we were hoping, and um, when you do that, when, the, when you're trying to set up a punt return, the gunner protectors usually put their hands on the, on the gunner as he goes down to cover the punt, not expecting a pass, thinking we would get pass interference if we didn't get the completion. And uh, that was kind of uh, our hope. The official didn't see that, uh, didn't look for it really. And I, I probably made a mistake by not calling it on our sideline so I could at least warn him, hey, here comes a fake, watch for pass interference. And I think they would have saw it. but. But it didn't work out. The breaks did not go our way, but you know, credit Valdosta State, they were really good. Uh, we didn't play our best, uh, obviously, and, and, uh, but we did, uh, we didn't, they did take advantage of those breaks. There's no doubt about it. And we also saw how much depth is important to, to winning it in is. this conference because they, they had a lot of guys touch the ball, and now the injury's starting to pile up a little bit for the Choctaws, especially on offensive line. They are, and uh, that hurts us, you know, that hurts us. Uh, when you're in a private school, of course, uh, you know, with the limited scholarships that we have in Division Two, it happens. You know, you just don't get as many people, as many scholarship players on the, on the field as you will at a state school. So uh, we got to make sure we're very fortunate. We're very lucky with uh, the breaks as far as injuries go, which we have not been this year. Uh, and also, uh, you know, those guys, you know, that that you have the quality recruits that you have. And so there's a there's a combination of things that go into this. A little bit of luck, and we're not having it right now. Well, you know, one of the young men who's performed consistently all year is Nathan Faishon. Yes. He's emerged as a really good run catch thread. You've got a lot of uh, things that you can do with him to get the ball in his hands to make things happen. Yeah, you bet. And, uh, you know, I wish he was a little bit bigger and uh, could run through and do some more things blocking. But uh, the things that he can do is when he touches the ball, he makes things happen. One good thing about Nate is also he gets open. You know, he has a good awareness of uh, – you know, sometimes you can run into coverage and other players can continue to run. He finds the open area and it's easy for the quarterback to see, hey, he knows how to get open. And uh, we try to get him the ball as many times as we can. And when he, when, when he does the sweep play, it uh, you know, gets good blocking on either side, whichever run direction he chooses to run. His receivers do a good job of getting him some openings. No doubt about it. You know what, when you have someone where you know or you believe can make it happen, uh, if I'm in front of him and I'm blocking, it, I, I tend to do a better job, you know, when you have a great player, a great player who can make things happen, you say, hey, look, he's about to get it, I'm going to make sure my block is going to spring him for that touchdown or that big play. And uh, so that's what I think we're doing. The, the more he gets the ball, the more we know that this is a chance we can have a big play, and the people around him and uh, that are going to be a key block in that scheme uh, do a great job for him. We've got West Georgia this week, and uh, th this is a coaching staff that's new to West Georgia, but not new to the conference. Coach no. Dean's been around a long time at Valdosta, so you know that they know what it takes to win in this league as well. They do. Uh, Coach Dean has done a great job at Valdosta, like, like you said, and, and uh, won a national championship at Valdosta State, has recruited great players, transfers from Division I schools and also junior college. He's, he's done a good job of that. So I think he'll fit in real well at West Georgia because they've been doing the same thing, and they've got a, a lot of talent. Uh, guys from Division 1A programs, not just 1AA programs, 1A programs, and a and, uh, very talented bunch. They're, they're, they're really good. They've lost a couple of games, uh, but they're really talented. And I, I don't know, uh, I know this league is tough, and they can compete with anybody in it, though. So we're going to have to bring our best game to, to compete. Well, one of the games that they lost was last week to West Alabama, a late touchdown by the Tigers, mm -hmm. who've emerged as the, the top team in the conference yes. now at this point. But uh, a team that also, the Choctaws, played well and played pretty even for most of the game over in Livingston earlier this year. Yes, so we, we know we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most anybody in the league. We feel like that. If we play our best, and, and uh, you know, of course, we've, like you said, we've had some injuries, and uh, so we'll have a, maybe a different uh, player or two uh, in several areas. But at those times when we're at our best, we can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh, West Georgia, you know, might should have won against West Alabama. They had a few breaks that go against them. and. Uh, I feel like West Alabama scored there at the very end and the, uh, to go ahead, but they got a call, they got a break, they threw an interception, and they called interference away from the ball somewhere where I thought, you know, 
we've seen throughout the year that they didn't get called out for us. You know, NCAA officials' philosophy is if it doesn't affect the play, you know, don't call it. Try to speed the game up, those type of things. Well, it didn't affect the play. It was way away, and they threw the interception, and, and they gave it to them, though. And, and uh, West Alabama just happens to be undefeated. And so it, it hurt West Georgia, though, you know. And uh, so they were right there with them. Could have won that ball game and, and uh, beat, you know, the, the team on top of the conference right now. So they're really good. We talked about the injuries to your offensive line, and uh, Aaron Fiesel did not play last week yes. as well at quarterback. Give us an update on some of these guys who got bumps and bruises. Well, Aaron is doing better. He's, he's up and running around, throwing the football and helping us in practice. Not quite ready yet, though, uh, but he'll be back before the end of the year. The good thing is we have a week off next week. Uh, don't play next Saturday, so we'll give him an extra week to heal up. Uh, some of these linemen are real close. Uh, we're getting some of them that also that, that uh, some guys that have uh, gone to the doctor and checking to see if it's how serious it may be, whether it will uh, come down to surgery or things like that. So uh, there's, there's some unfortunate things in sports, you know, and I won't just say in football because it happens in all, yeah. all kinds of sports, but uh, it's very tough because you, won't, you know you guys, you guys and, and girls and other sports that put, put a lot of hard work into uh, trying to get on the field. And um, sometimes those injuries prevent that, and that's, that's yeah. tough. Uh, but the team has to continue to go on and play, and the next man steps up and does the best he can. And so we'll see. I think we're going to get some guys back uh, as the year goes on and uh, so we can finish strong. And, uh, but, you know, some of them I don't know. We'll just we'll see how the, what the doc says. Well, we've got homecoming this week. It'll be a great atmosphere at Robinson Hill Stadium. Yes. A lot of folks coming back. And I, I think one thing that they're going to be uh, – pleased with is that they're going to be pleased with the effort that the Choctaws give on the field because even wins and losses it's been a tough year no doubt but yeah. this team has really played hard and they've played for a full uh, full game every every Saturday in and out. I believe that too and uh, I'm proud of them for that you know and and uh, you would think if we were 7-0 and uh, would we be giving more effort would there be a, a little more uh, the morale obviously would be up more and, and part of that has to do with the effort that they give, you know, they're giving good effort, and, and they're fighting hard. But you know, they, you can't you can't help but be down just a little bit because of the circumstances, the adversity that we're facing with with these, uh, you know, wins and losses, and and the injuries that we're seeing. Um, you know, so I don't know exactly if they're playing their best, but they're fighting. They're fighting their guts out, and I'm proud for that. Well, coach, we appreciate your time as always. Wish you good luck in the game this week. Thank you.